is your host, Alex Garrett. And welcome inside to another edition of the Alex Garrett Podcast Network. On the go tonight, outside of Regal Cinemas with Gabby, where we just saw Oppenheimer. Now you can see any of the days that it's been out, you can see it next week. But today happens to be the day, August 6th, 1945, the anniversary of the dropping of the atomic bomb on Hiroshima. So to see the entire history, the way it was built up to this day in 1945, uh, talk about either irony or just adding the his, his, historic nature of a day like today. And firstly... I always believe it's something we should not apologize for in the sense of America shouldn't have done it at all. I think that's a terrible way to approach things. I think this movie comes out not only around the anniversary and on the anniversary, you can see it today, but in a time where the atom bomb and the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki are really criticized, even by President Obama back in the day. Specifically in 2015. But if it did not happen, and America did not sort of defend itself after Pearl Harbor, even though it was four years, then what would that be? And this is what, you know, what I think is happening today is nobody is allowed to defend themselves. Daniel Penny couldn't defend a whole subway car. And it's that same mentality of don't defend yourself that uh, is, is why the atom bomb has been totally, and the idea of bombing Japan as we did, has been totally crapped on over the years here. But when you think of Oppenheimer this himself, see, I had known that this was an underground project. I think we all did, the Manhattan Project. But I also started to wonder when you realize they had to test this atom bomb before it actually, you know, bombed a real city in in the in Japan in the world. You're telling me this test was well it was well documented was considered a secret test when you can literally see the plumes of smoke as you've seen every atom bomb imagery real, in real life, by the way, uh, that secret, I don't know, it's very weird that sort of went undetected, it had to have had some reaction in New Mexico, and that's the other part, Manhattan Project in Los Alamos in New Mexico, and then, I don't know if President Truman called J. Robert Oppenheimer a crybaby in real life. They actually said some of these things were uh, fictionalized. But the story is true. The people that are portrayed were real. And while I think Oppenheimer uh, he did his job what he was hired to do it definitely was a US intel government you know, kind of secrecy because no one was allowed to know this project was going on. No one was allowed to know we were building a atom bomb. No one was allowed to. Not even our allies. Uh, you know, Oppenheimer suggests our allies know. And it, the whole idea of morality that was questioned not only by everybody under the sun right now, but in this movie. You know, there was a there was a moment in the movie that I thought uh, when Oppenheimer says they have to have a moral advantage to this. Meaning you can't just drop it on a city without letting some people know. Unfortunately, going along with what my dad had told me from years about this atom bomb that the Russians did have intel on it because there might and then proven to be leaks from Los Alamos uh, and espionage in Los Alamos because Oppenheimer got too close to the Soviet, to the Communist Party and Communist sympathizers, if you will. And 
what I think is admirable is that he didn't let that sway him to give actual leaks or give actual information. I can see the criticism of having him of him being too close to the Communist Party. But, but, at the end of the day, that criticism should be overshadowed by what he did and what he accomplished. And I think this movie also showed in Oppenheimer the idea that there was a passing of the torch. That Albert Einstein's theory of relativity, and I, you know, Einstein was around back in the 1940s and beyond. I mean, the idea of the passing of the torch from Einstein to Oppenheimer was pretty well documented by Christopher Nolan and uh, highlighted by Christopher Nolan, who did a hell of a job. He actually screenwrote the play and uh, the movie and directed it. That man is talented. And the soundtrack, I mean, we were waiting for the boom of the atomic bomb and the delay of that until it actually happened. I mean, there was so much you um, so much use of the audio and, and drum dramatics of the audio usage of the bomb of the music of the tracks if you will that you were on the edge of the seat I mean I saw people with their feet up and I thought that's kind of weird because this is a serious movie about something that changed the world and changed America for the better but I, I think that this cross-examination that's the term I was thinking of of J. Robert Oppenheimer Played by, played by Cillian Murphy, was very, very useful. And, and I would say, you know, they say in movies, was it effective enough? And I would say it was a very effective cross examination. But with that power that he got as director of the Manhattan Project. came this I don't think he was desiring to do bad for the country but it did come with enemies and well I think it's fascinating about um, Iron Man becoming this Louis Strauss See, some of these names were uh, I had just really gotten to know today but Louis Strauss of the Atomic Energy Commons. It was a whole uh, government initiative that he headed up. Played by Iron Man, Robert Downey. And I thought Robert Downey played a damn good role today with that. And if you've seen the movie, you kind of know what I'm referencing. If you haven't, I still say go see Oppenheimer. It's more educational, intellectual, historical than I would say Barbie. So go see Oppenheimer. Uh, even if the anniversary did pass us today, it's still in theater. So I would... If you're fascinated by science, if you're fascinated by physics, if you're fascinated by the history, I mean, and the poli- and the political, and the sort of how we got here. I think this movie, and we talk about this a lot, in preserving America's fabric and history, Christopher Nolan does that through this movie. And he does it very well. I think he helps preserve that, yes, the atom bomb was, you know, it happened. It did good. It shows that Oppenheimer did his job. It showed that years later, the backlash caused him to have enemies. Some he developed through the process of making this atom bomb, but some came after. I truly believe that someone... When they realize, oh wait, the public doesn't really like what we did in Nagasaki and Hiroshima, they backed away from him. And in the case of his Louis Strauss, who was, I guess, a commerce uh, dep- uh, cabinet nominee for... And actually, this was an Eisenhower appointee in the Commerce Department. So how the, he went from science to commerce... 
I bring the head of the American Energy Commission. It was kind of an interesting uh, switch. And you could tell the way Nolan wrote it out, the way it was portrayed. Strauss wanted J. Robert Oppenheimer out of his hairs for good. So he's up this whole, I would say, kangaroo court. By the way, they were so hell-bent on the leaks and the, rightfully so, coming from Los Alamos, uh, because I think that Robert Oppenheimer's judgment of some people's character lacked. I think he did. He trusted everybody when he really could have been a little more uh, self-preservation and, and I would say looking out for himself more, more so. But he did it for the good of the project to not ruffle feathers. So he's trying to be understanding. They all bit him in the, in the ass after. But the thing about that is they cared so much about the leaks. I mean, the McCarthy era and all the, the blacklisting back in the 50s and the 40s. Uh, why haven't we found out who leaked the Supreme Court opinion on Roe v. Wade? The opinion aside is one thing. But the leak of the court in the highest manner should be treated as if we're leaking atomic bomb development secrets from Los Alamos. So I think there's a lot of tie-ins from then to now. And questions as to why when we were so protective of our secrets back then, but any leak now is kind of selected if they go after it or not, right? That's how it feels. But here's what Eisenhower said. If you've say, if you seen Oppenheimer, I'm going to ex- extend this a little bit for you. When losing uh, Strauss, he said, I'm losing a truly valuable associate in the business of government. Meaning he was losing an ally that would continue the military industrial complex. That's how I read it because obviously uh that's what was around. That's why they wanted to keep building because they wanted to build this complex which could have all this weaponization. And I think the fear was if you could use the atom bomb once, you can use it all the time. Well, thankfully, we haven't seen the atom bomb be dropped anytime soon. But I couldn't help but think Our reaction to Pearl Harbor in 1945 on this date, August 6th, and the reaction to what the Japanese did, it took a few years, but they developed it, they tested it, and they did it. I couldn't help but think, about 9-11, because it did take us years after 9-11 to kill Osama bin Laden. But more importantly, we didn't strike that area. You know, they say all these wars happen, and it's true. Iraq war and, and, and the war in Afghanistan, which we've still been reeling from, especially because of the horrible withdrawal in 2021. But we never had the atom bomb effect reaction like we did in 1945. And I can't help but think, is that just because there has been a lessened approach in the military and advisors to the president to not go after our enemies as hard anymore? We seem to not give a crud if China uh, sent over COVID you know, from the Wuhan lab intentionally or not, but they let it to happen. There's not been much reaction to that as I think people would like it to be, especially those who lost family members in COVID. So the atom bomb was also a a once-in-a-lifetime thing because that was the show of America's strength. And while I think we can all be very, very you know, reflective on the loss that that bomb did. I think the whole negativity against the atom bomb is missing the point. 
That was a defense of America that we'll never see again. Especially when you see the Bidens uh, continually, and then any politician, continually selling out their political soul to the enemy one way or the other. And not taking action, especially now, you know, with the Russia-Ukraine thing, and while maybe that didn't affect us, but not taking action in certain parts just shows we're not that tough anymore. And that's why I think there's a romantic, a romantic feeling toward the A-bomb and in the sense of that was America's strength right there. That we showed we could do that. And we did do it. And it was because of J. Robert Oppenheimer's direction. How flawed, how wild and crazy and, you know. He slept with a communist (laughs) multiple times. So his judgment wasn't always good. And the whole point was you could be a genius, but you have to have some common sense and some wisdom, which it seems like Oppenheimer did lack. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, on August 6, 2023, the anniversary of the A-bomb land being dropped in Hiroshima and dropped in Nagasaki, the birthday of Gabby Pisani uh, 34 years ago. Today, we can sit here and say Oppenheimer did good for the country. And it's a country that needs to find that strength again and show the world, hey, you give us a disease, we're not going to let that slide. You burn our, you throw bricks through our businesses and riot, we're not going to let that slide. That's what that showed in 1945. And maybe, maybe we're not going to get there again. But it did create a new kind of energy, a calmness, if you will, that's, and of course, helped end World War II. But it, it, it just silenced the opponent, the enemy. And that's what we'll never see again. Instead, we're going to see. You know, politicians, and I don't want to mention any names, the Bidens, saying to China and Russia, hey, guess what? Uh, we're going to have the. We've gone from the atom bomb to the Biden brand. That's how crazy it is, okay? We've gone from dropping the atom bomb in a show of strength to dropping <laughs> the Biden brand in WhatsApp as a way to get money into the Biden industrial complex. I've called them that multiple times and I'm sticking by the Biden Industrial Complex. We've gone from a show of strength to a brand that has the President of the United States needing to use smaller steps. That's all you need to know about this country. Oh, and Coke being found in the White House. That's all you need to know. And damn it, I wish we showed strength again. Because, see, they think, you know, Russia's going after Ukraine. Russia and China want (laughs) dominance. But it was, to put a capper on this, fascinating to me. To see what my dad had told me about the Russians getting all these secrets of the atom bomb. uh, Right from Los Alamos, how they did that with the bombshell. And, And that's the last thing about this. This movie showed the atom bomb from that it went from the atom bomb to the bombshell hearings crucifying what time would call the father of the atomic bomb J. Robert Oppenheimer and that shouldn't have been so maybe we do need a little wisdom with our genius Garrett on the go outside of Regal Cinemas. 
after this showing of Oppenheimer. Go see it this weekend and while it's still out. And I hope you like it if you're a history buff or even a science buff. You definitely want to check it out. Have a great night. August 6th. A date to remember. And uh, to see Oppenheimer on this date feels kind of uh, synchronistic. Have a great night.